It's Thursday at 5 o'clock. That means it's time for Tony and Chelsea Live. Uh, heck yeah, it is. Mic check, mic this... check. Oh, there it goes. That was a lot. <laughs> okay, so it's been a while. We haven't seen you since the New Year. So hello, everybody. Thanks Happy for coming back and joining us. Today, we're going to be reviewing your abstract photos. So if you haven't already submitted, go to sdp.io slash submit. We try to get through a bunch of photos. We get hundreds of submissions. So if your photo isn't reviewed, don't feel bad. I bet we'll be able to see stuff today because people don't really have too many abstract photos. Oh. Can we talk about what abstract photos are and why you might want to do them? Because sure. it's not the most popular genre of photography, but I think it's one of my favorite because abstract photos to me focus entirely on composition. With an abstract photo, you usually can't see exactly what the subject is. It doesn't say, oh, this is a building or a car. But instead, you see shapes and lines and geometry. And when you break art down to such basic elements, it allows you to focus on the balance and the color and the shapes. Yeah, it's a good exercise in perfecting your composition. So if you haven't tried it, you should try it. Um, yeah, so while you're submitting those, we will talk about our overlords and saviors. Squarespace. If <laughs> Tony and I both have, you made a really strange face. You're oh, like, oh, it was the voice. It was definitely the voice. <laughs> <laughs> Tony and I both have Squarespace portfolios that they gave us. But Tony, he went the extra mile. You do too, Chris? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's Chris Dang, Redding. That's good. Hello, yeah, Chris. I, sw I switched to them because of you guys, and they are excellent. Yeah, they are. It's yeah, easy to use. Tony actually bought two more. He went he went a little far with it. But you can get your free trial today. It's 14 days. Um, no credit card needed, so you don't have to remember to cancel. Just try it out. See how easy it is. If you like it, you can use the coupon code TONY to get 10% off. So go to squarespace.com slash TONY. Use the coupon code TONY. And if you have a Squarespace portfolio, you can submit it to sdp.io slash link, and we may review that. So thank you, Squarespace, for being so good at what you do. While you're sending in your photos at sdp.io slash submit, let's cover a couple of points of news. There's not much going on in this kind of dead time after the holidays, but it's Canon did on. mention that they were working on an 8K camera. 8K, which is four times bigger than 4K, oddly. Are you excited? Um, I mean, I'm glad to see them making some progress. I would like them to release a real 4K camera before they start talking about their 8K camera. You're getting a little ahead of yourselves here. I Here's how it's going to happen. They will, not this next, maybe this next generation, though, Canon will finally have like full width 4K. And then maybe the generation after that, they'll have like heavily cropped 8K. Kind of like they have heavily cropped 4K now. Um, but I would be surprised if they didn't stop at 6K between here and 8K, don't you think? 8K is a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah, and our computers can barely handle 4K as it is. Chelsea's okay. drinking a gin martini tonight. I know, but I my, my chair is not stable. This is a danger. Is it the <laughs> chair or the drink? It's a little bit of both. It's a bad combination. <clears throat> so okay. I don't. I definitely don't think we'll see an uh, AK Canon camera from Canon in 2019. I would be shocked if it came in 2020. They haven't exactly been pushing the envelope here. I think we'll see it from like Panasonic first. We have some news from Nikon. They uh, announced that they're in. They're developing firmware updates for the Z6 and Z7 that will provide two really sought after features. One is raw video which is like raw files, like raw photos, but for video where you can recover highlights and shadows in post. But that's only if you hook up like a special Atomos uh, field recorder, a big yeah. expensive device that you'd have to rig onto a proper rig. But still, that's pretty a, a breakthrough because no other camera in this class can do this today. But at the same time, it's not available. They're just saying that they're going to work on the development of this, but it's, it's in process. I think it's cool that they're talking about what they're going to do. They're adding some features. That's just a firmware update. It's supposed to be a firmware update. Yeah. And same thing with eye autofocus, which we pretty much hammered the Z6 and Z7 for not having eye autofocus. So I kind of wish like they told us that it was coming before, but I'm glad they decided on it yeah. now. I don't know what happened between the launch and now where they're like, oh, we should work on IAF. But Maybe yeah, they felt like they just had to get that bad boy out. Yeah, and a I, lot of things are changing. Yeah, it's and telling us that it's in development is a little bit of a tease, but I guess we'll be able to see it pretty soon. I'm oh, gonna take a look uh, at some, uh, You got more? Yeah. 
Jared oh, Poland yeah. is going to be joining the show uh, on the 24th. So we won't be here next week, but the week after that, Jared is going to be joining us and we're going to be reviewing your concert photos. That's what he loves to do. That's what he's good at. Um, previously, we have been in some spats with Jared. We punched each other. Um, he scratched my eyeballs and I can't see. Uh, Tony broke his legs. Yeah, so yeah. it'll be really interesting to see how the show goes. Sometimes I steal I his camera same... and set it to oh, JPEG. I thought I was wearing the same outfit. In personal news, I'm realizing the last bottle of gin we had that I tried was extremely watered down, which means someone drank it and put water in it. I just had a personal epiphany. <laughs> if you're that person, you can come forward. I'm not going to punish you. I'm just curious. Another possibility is that I shook it on ice for a long time and the ice itself watered it down. It was you. Okay. On the we other have... hand, we have had roommates who were alcoholics, so <laughs> <laughs> not going to roll that first thing out. Let's take a look at some abstract photos. Roommate is a generous word. This looks like a... This is an interesting use of like highlights and texture. Um, wow. You know what I think I would do with this one, photographer, is maybe just make the colors richer since it's a lot about the reflections and the lights and the colors. Tony, what's your impression? Um, it's, there is not a whole lot of contrast to this. I, you know, there's also too much going on, I think, for it to be abstract like it's definitely a city street with a tree back there but i do think that there's kind of an interesting geometry in here sorry this crop is being so weird wow, and geez. what might be more compelling is to like okay. really whoa, close whoa, whoa. up <laughs> on some of these maybe go into black and white i mean i don't think that this is a great picture but i'm trying to give some tips as to how to make it a little more abstract and a little less literal okay that must just be like a chain link fence rolled up or something right I think it might be a bench. Yeah, that's oh, my there impression. You but you're probably right. It'd be a pretty uncomfortable bench. Son of a bench. Right. Justin loved that pun. He was like, that was terrible. Sometimes Justin laughs at my bad jokes, I think, to be a supportive friend. All right, let's move on to the next one. Sympathy laughs. Yeah, he's like, oh, Chelsea, I, I feel for her. Okay, this one's pretty cool. I This one has really compelling colors and these sort of geometric circles. Ooh. Is this is this oil or is this um, oh, you done in right. post? Well, I was wondering that, but no, I, I think it's real. I mean, oil? we see, like, look at the edges here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I am going to give this one a pick. I find that really interesting. I'm drawn in by the colors. I think it's definitely a format to experiment with. You know, not all of the space really contributes to the overall story. Like the lower left corner just is kind of non-existent. And what I would do is try to really find a compelling arrangement of colors and be very deliberate about this so that you're piecing together an interesting photo that surpasses just a picture of something close up. Yeah, so you have a really interesting idea and all the interesting elements now have a composition that makes sense, that makes this more compelling. Yeah, craft something from scratch. Uh, this is a tunnel. I mean, I kind of see where Martin is going with this. Uh, it's hard for me to say it's abstract. And in fact, I kind of want to add something else to it because it's not so abstract that I can focus just on the lines, but it might be a cool spot for a portrait. It would be a great spot for a portrait. Oh, this one's cool. Is this a spider web? What is happening? No, it must be an instrument or something, right? I don't know. Spider. It's a spider web. Really? Yeah. That's what I thought too. Okay. Bev Miller. Wow, um, that's cool. Bev, you're definitely onto something here, but there's a lot of unused space in this photo. Like the whole top part of the frame is kind of nothing. It's a spider web. Uh, so what I would do is get some extension tubes, get really close to it. And um, with abstract photos, I also really would like to see you shooting at the base ISO and doing everything you can to kind of eliminate the noise. Cause there's a little bit of noise in there distracts, I think from the overall abstractness of it. I like that Bev. Ooh, this is so interesting. I really like the composition. So this is kind of what we're talking about. See how it's an abstract photo, but there's still some balance to it. Are you still using those same concepts that you use when you're taking a portrait or a landscape or anything mm -hmm. else? Um, 
but it's just abstract photography. Yeah, I gave this one a pick. I, I really like the shapes here. It's got a cool balance to it. You know, it's a little bit left heavy, but it's nice. A soffit. Oh, okay. I didn't immediately get that. I think, I think it is abstract, but I wish everything was balanced a little bit more. You know, this is very bottom heavy. Like there's nothing in particular going on in the top. And sometimes what I'll do when I find interesting shapes like that is I'll try different angles. So I'm going to end up cropping, but my main goal here is really just to rotate it and find an arrangement that kind of makes the lines a little more interesting and a little more balanced. I agree with that, but I will say that these holes in the soffit is what gave it away to me, <clears throat> what kind of made the lines a little less interesting. So if you got rid of those, then there you go. suddenly it's a little more abstract. You're getting rid of those little details that kind of give it away that it's just metal. Yeah. <clears throat> Good edit. All Color right, photo of early. snow and flat light. This is so cool. You get a pick, and not just because you showed it. I just want to peek at what's in there. <laughs> Ooh, it's just so snowy. No peeking. Chris. No. Yeah, it's beautiful, but also the balance and arrangement of the lines is really nice. You know what I mean? He's very carefully kind of divided it in the middle. I think I might even just bring out this line a little bit. I was going to say, I really like that line there. I like it's, it. That's what gives it me, natural but, feeling. Yeah. But I don't know how to, I can't do that right now, Erland. I know if I try, it's going to be shameful. That would be a great book cover. Yeah, I what thought that too. Be about, like Justin? a card or a book. Uh, like some self-help thing or something. <laughs> <laughs> it would be. Boat by Steve Evans. Um, yeah. It's it's a boat. I think the <laughs> shapes here are interesting, but it's clear like we're looking at a boat. I'm uh, not I able mean, to focus on just the composition or the arrangement of shapes. Whoa. Guess what, says Benjamin. Is that a hedgehog? That was going to be my guess. <laughs> or is it a plant? Well, I don't know, because hedgehog, their, their yeah. fur is all arranged, yeah, like in order. It's kind of random, right? A chaos hog. Okay, that's interesting. I'll say that there's not much depth. Yeah, and the the shapes and lines don't arrange themselves in any meaningful way. Like, what would you? How would you describe this composition? You know, we don't see clear geometry okay. or use of any compositional rules. It's just kind of a background of clutter. It is a texture, though. It's a texture. Which is interesting. That's a better word. Yeah. I like texture. Okay, here we go. This is a great example of something that has interesting shapes, and that's what makes a yeah, but compelling abstract. Is it photo. a picture or is it just a drawing? Um, well, it does look like in post they've like smeared that down, right? I think that's okay. They got a little creative with it. I'm not. I I do not know what it is, but I, I think it's cool. I like the arrangement of it. It could be oil in water or something, right? Oh, yeah, maybe. Brent, you're hurting me. Well, I'm giving it a pick. We don't need to figure out what it is. I do. In order to like it. Yeah. I need to know photos. what things are. I need to know. And Brent, you talk to me right now. <laughs> I'm not some crazy hippie like Tony. I want to bump up the colors here. I think that that's part of what makes this photo really interesting. Crazy hippie. <laughs> <laughs> I think this shot's really cool. It, I mean, it's a shot of waves. I, it's kind of abstract. I think this would I make a really abstract. good print on a wall. Pam, I think it's you beautiful. You know, it's the kind of thing that adds mood to a room, but wouldn't distract people with too much detail. It's a beautiful shot. It's really beautiful. I'm going to pick. You got to pick. You talked me into it, Pam. We don't even know what we do with those. Escaping Her Bonds by Jim Setzer. Ooh. That's wow. interesting. There's a person in there. Is there? That's yeah. how I feel when I do the ropes at the gym. <laughs> I love this. I didn't really know what it was. I didn't see the person right away. It kind of looks like a snake. Uh, I think it's very Wait, cool. Where's the person? I lost it. Let's. Whoa. Oh, there it is. 
Cool. Yeah, that's cool. Ooh. Oh, great and example of abstract. This is the kind of abstract Tony loves. You've got the geometry, the shapes, the lines with the highlights and the shadows, and you have a nice balanced composition too. Excellent. Let's give you five stars. Yeah, that's the kind of shot anybody can go out and do. This is what I want people to think about. Like, if I can't find something to take a photo of, I will start to just look for shadows and lines and make compelling arrangements out of them. There's a lot of different shots. I kind of wish that these lines are on kind of a non-deliberate <clears throat> tilt. I wish this was either a more deliberate tilt, like you're at 30 degrees or just zero degrees straight up and down one way or the other, because otherwise, you know, it doesn't feel deliberate. Uh, okay, it's a close-up shot. I, I think there's probably abstract shots in here and there that would be interesting, but it's definitely like the grill of a car. Yeah. Hmm. Um, it's a little flat, so you can see that there's not much contrast. This is like gray on gray on gray on gray, and so you're not getting much depth or dimension to show off the texture. Um, you can put the contrast up or you can put up the whites if you press alt and put up the whites you can see when they peak and if you press alt and put down the blacks you can see when they're crushed uh, and then you have a little more contrast so yeah the texture is cool but if you were to break this down into compositional elements it would just be one circle in the right third of the frame yeah and that itself isn't an interesting composition Uh, this is much more interesting. I love the white triangle in the upper left balanced by the black triangle in the lower right. I would try to make those a little more perfectly symmetrical by just tilting the camera a little bit. Yeah, it's hard to do here. And then, you know, there's really no particular distractions. Otherwise, yeah, that's pretty close. You might want to rotate it a little more, but you get what I'm going at here, but you've done all the right things. Like you've found basic shapes and abstracted anything that would be a distraction from it. So I give you a pick, Logan. Awesome shot. These colors are gorgeous. Yeah, this is an abstract a photo. Beautiful That's colors. Kind of, yeah. It does make us just think about the colors, I think. Yeah. Interesting. Um, this is abstract. It looks like waters or pebbles, I'm not really sure. Um, <clears throat> but again, I'd like to see some more compositional elements. Um, I can't really break down the composition. Maybe this is a line here. So, but yeah. But I like that, I like what you did. You're thinking outside the box. Um, so you have some lines here, here Chris, I think radiating. I'm picking up his mic. And that would be the composition is these radiating lines. So that's pretty interesting. You've got some good colors. What do you think, Tony? Yeah, as far as the composition goes, it's basically just one big line through the middle, right? But it is a cool subject. Yeah, I could it's see pretty. it um, being a set. I think if you put these things in a set, then maybe visually it'd make more sense. This is gorgeous. Yeah, that's so cool. Um, one thing I don't like in abstract photos is the bokeh. I find it it's, echoes the real world too much. Uh, and there's almost no need for it. But I, you know, so I might just, if you're going for an abstract look, I might just crank it up. I would also, again, think about the composition here. You know, we have one primary element here, and then there's just kind of detail over here. But when your eye looks at something, you just see this oval shape and then a bunch of lines, yeah. but there's no particular balance or arrangement to it all. You could definitely use these as primary lines if you were to get in even closer though, yeah. but I think it's an interesting shot. I think it's interesting, I like it. Yeah. Yeah, it really does. It very is. Cool. Nature's network, it says, so maybe he was thinking along the same lines. It is very cool. Um, do you want to tell us some comments, Chris? Yeah, what do you got for us? Got anything we good? We do have a question, Tony, Chelsea, and Justin. This is from Jim Setzer. How do you keep getting? How do you keep from getting burned out 
keeping up the pace of content that you do. We are, No, we're just burned out. <laughs> <laughs> Simple. We're burned out. We're tired people. What else? <laughs> do you guys disagree? No, I'm pretty burned out. I definitely need the vacation. I'm feeling a little bit better. Yeah, but... just take time off. That's it. Yeah. I think that we're all really burned out right now because things we don't, we had a bunch of things due around the holidays and then they just ended up being due in January. So we're kind of catching up. So maybe we'll be less burned out in February. And the oh, holidays dude. weren't like incredibly relaxing or anything. No, the you holidays know, just... are stressful, yeah. right? What else, Chris? Another one, uh, other than buildings, what's the best abstract photo you've ever seen? Other than buildings. Um, Tony had a really cool picture of a fountain and it was these granite lines oh, in the fountain. Yeah. Um, I've seen cool, um, like you can get it just like city sidewalks or, you know, cracks on the ground. Um, I don't know. I don't have any specific one that I'm thinking of. Oh, Arno Minikin has some really cool kind of abstract stuff where he manipulates his body so that he looks like a part of the landscape. Or um, he'll manipulate his body so that it's just so strange that you can't really figure out what's going on with it. So those are some examples. Yeah, and I actually thought Smushek's uh, photo of the snow, I thought that was a great example of how to find abstract in nature. You can definitely find abstract in nature, like flowers and things like that. Uh, do you have anything else, Chris? That's it so far. That's it. Everybody's just really interested in seeing some of these pictures. Yeah, they're really good pictures. I like abstract because people always ask, um, what do I do if I'm uninspired or what do I do if my town's too boring? And you can do abstract in your house. You can do abstract in your yard. You really don't have to go far to find something abstract. It's definitely a way to exercise your eye, your composition eye. And it's something that I know a lot of people struggle with, but if you just <clears throat> practice on working at looking at things differently, so that you can see the composition inside the composition. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that translates when you go to do other types of photography, you're noticing small details other people might not be noticing. So yeah. suddenly you go somewhere like that's been photographed a million times, like the Oculus in New York City, and you might notice something different other photographers haven't because you've been training your eye to see these small details. Yeah, the Oculus might be one of the best places on the planet to do Abstract Some photography abstract. If you happen to be nearby. You want to take a look at a Squarespace portfolio? I'd love to. Okay. Images and birds. I like to go to the. I like page both first. of those things. Let's see who we're talking about. <gasps> it's Arnie. I love Arnie? this picture. It's like you are artsy and cool. My name's Arnie. I'm a bird watching wildlife enthusiast. I like it. Not too much. You're approachable. I can tell you're creative because you have this interesting. Um, picture vector of yourself, illustration, whatever you'd like to call it, and you tell me where I can find more of you. You have this first shot, a little bit abstract. We have these two kind of shapes balanced, the swallow and the moon in the background. Very cool. Cool construct. That's a beautiful picture. These are not, this one needs to be close. I can't really see what's going on, at least in this format. But I like the line that he has going on there. Um, yeah, I like that he's working the environment into the composition. This one... Like, I think it would work better if the bird were a little closer because this is like so close to the bottom of the frame. This is going to be hard for you because you are all about extreme crops on wildlife. Well, I do like that, though. I was specifically saying I like those without the extreme crop. This photo is underexposed. I would just bring it up a stop but I and really, or so. You know what I really like about this duck photo? Um, first of all, it's in a pretty environment. I see so many duck photos where they're shooting down on a duck just in gross looking grass with like trash or just plain boring water but this guy is really posing on this really beautiful mossy tree mm -hmm. and it's forming a diagonal line talking about abstract what you see when you study abstract and then start shooting this is just a very simple compositional element that's making the whole picture more interesting to look at look at this owl never met an owl that wasn't extremely annoyed by my presence gotta say <laughs> Uh, oh, look at his kingfisher. Oh, man. And you know what else I really love about his photos is that he's doing wildlife, but he's doing this really beautiful artistic processing. Very cool. He, that gives him a signature style. I would love to see that last picture printed large. Me too. That's kind of the format that it needs to be. If we were looking at this 
on our phone. Squarespace would do an awesome, awesome job of making it work, but the picture itself would be too small to pull out that kind of detail. <clears throat> so you do have to think about the format that you're presenting in. Uh, these are good bird photos. I mean, I some of these can be pared down. Like no birds at the feeders, a seagull just flying, that one can go. Uh, but you have... Whoa. That one's cool. I have to say, if I had wow. seen, <clears throat> yeah, that is really amazing. <laughs> wow, they're really stretchy birds, huh? Um, if I had seen something like this, not in a set, I might have said, oh, like kind of interesting, maybe distracting. But I love that he's always working it into his photos. Yeah, I think that photo should stay. Um... <clears throat> Excuse me. Great. I, these but are... he should pare this down, right? That photo should go. Oh. That photo should go. What about this duck this ignoring me? Go. <gasps> be out. That one should go. <gasps> that one should go. Ooh, that one's pretty. great. Okay, start with your best. Finish with your second best. Scapes. Ooh, he shortened it. He knows I'm a busy woman. <laughs> <laughs> this is gorgeous. Look at the composition. He really has such a nice yeah, eye for I love the composition. reflection there. Mm-hmm. Well, I am loving your work. I love that you didn't over design or try to add to your portfolio. You left it simple. The images, uh, they speak for themselves. It's not distracting. You've introduced yourself properly with your about page. Um, and now here comes the moment of truth. Is your blog up to date? Because uh -oh. I've never managed to do that. <clears throat> wow. <gasps> wow. Whoa, whoa. Oh my gosh. Multiple. <gasps> Okay, this man's a genius. Yeah, he made it to like five blog posts. That's amazing. So I think our advice is that the layout seems to be great. The design is very good. You have your own personal style, and that's coming through in your portfolio. It's integrating um, like composition and the environment into your shots with really powerful composition. But you need to pare things way down, I think. Uh, maybe eliminate two out of three of the pictures. Bring it way that's down. That's aggressive. Let's see what... Arn had to say about Squarespace. Squarespace is not only as easy to use as Chelsea says, it also offers a solution for every stylistic demand you might throw at it. This is my biggest surprise. When I set up the page, it might be simple to offer an easy to use builder or one that is full of options, but to combine both is a great achievement. As an, and as an enthusiast, I was long pondering if I would build a website, but when I made it, I was overwhelmed with the result. It's fun, right? It just feels good to get all of your pictures that you love in one spot and to see them in such a nice place. Everybody should try it. Even if you just use the free trial to set up your, your portfolio and really show off your best work, it's a great exercise to pare down. And you know so what? give it a shot. Send it to your mom because your mom's going to love it. You're right. That's a really good way to start. <laughs> Assuming you have a good mom. Not everybody just does. Just tell me. If your mom doesn't love it, tell me. She's going to love it. She's get a new share. mom. Get a new mom. But keep Squarespace. <laughs> you can go to squarespace.com slash Tony to start your portfolio. Get a 14-day free trial, no credit card required. If you love it, the coupon code Tony will get you 10% off. Thanks for making all this possible, Squarespace. You want to take a look at some more pictures? or Tony, that fast talk was incredible. You sounded like the end of a, like an infomercial. It's artificial. They speed it up in post. <laughs> <laughs> a real-time post. It's yeah. real-time. <gasps> this is oh, cool. Speaking of post-processing... Oh. Uh, or maybe the wormhole attacked their fall leaves. I don't know, but it's kind of cool, right? It's cool, William. Or, no, yeah. That's cool. Or no. Cool idea. Or yeah. <laughs> this is definitely far from abstract, but it's you okay. brought in airplanes and fireworks, so that's cool. Ooh. Oh, Alan. I'm nice. really feeling it. Yeah, you're on to something here, Alan. I'll say it's a little bit unbalanced, like... Look where the bottom of the frame cuts into the chain link and look where the top of the frame cuts into the chain link. I think what you're emphasizing here is symmetry. And I think we'll want to bring in the top to make sure that it's completely balanced. But great eye. Oh. This one too. Speaking of nature, I really like this. You know what? I like nature. But I almost wonder if, dare I say it, we should crop in some more. <gasps> I was also going to say maybe eliminate distractions. I'm not sure all the little spots in the water are helping with the message. And it's 
you can do a little bit of post-processing to make it reflect more what your eye saw. Because I bet when you saw this, you didn't see every blemish in the water because your eye would have been struck with the highest contrast subject. But as we look at the still photo, we're going to get distracted. And oh. as Chelsea's demonstrating, it's pretty easy to go in and clean up those little spots. So keep up that trend, make the water nice and clean, and then I think you'll have a really compelling shot. Uh, okay, not, pictures of birds. Mm. This, well... It's playing with abstraction. Yeah, it's not quite abstract, but we have gorgeous color contrast here, right? Yeah. Very complementary colors, a nice, powerful diagonal. I think if it was in a set of abstract photos that told a multi-picture story of this particular location, then I think it could be like a nice wall mm -hmm. that you made for yourself. That's not, I don't think that's abstract. I think we so, saw that. Uh, uh, that's like, just like a chandelier. Now we're getting to something, Bill. Tony, why do people say, now we're cooking with gas? Why do people say that? I don't know. Was <laughs> Was it when people just used fire? And then the, I imagine it was from like a marketing campaign. <clears throat> I don't from get it. gas. Yeah, big gas working on our colloquialisms. All right, Bill. I like the color contrast. I like that it's abstract. Oh, it's a fountain. I can see some of the texture underneath. Very interesting. Okay, I like that. It's, it's too much, though. I like where you're going with this. The lines and like a bird would be great, but there's just too much going on. So too many birds. Yeah, too many birds and, you know, showing the actual, like, post and all the wiring and such on it. It's just, I find it too distracting. It's very clear what you're looking at. You don't focus on the composition. Yeah, here you go. Maybe. Maybe. We, we have some powerful elements here. We have the line coming in from the left, and then we have a big sort of hemisphere and these two powerful red lines. So your challenge when you see this is to find a way to crop it, to compose it, where to position yourself, where you make this into an interesting shape. I just made it bonkers. Now you're like, what is this, the world? You drag that bonker slider all the way to the right, Chelsea. <laughs> if I designed Lightroom, <laughs> things would be so much more interesting. Uh, okay. It's a cool building shop and not abstract. This Oh, sorry. I, I This spot has real potential. This spot. But right now it's very just right heavy. And again, this is going to be all about composition. So there might be if if you were there this would be better, but maybe you could rotate the camera and kind of pull this in so it's more balanced. Um still mm -hmm. So I, what I'm trying to say is you found an interesting subject with clean lines and no distractions. That has the potential for good abstract photography. Now try to find some way to arrange those lines in a way that's meaningful compositionally. So here, at least the frame has more balance to it. It's a little more abstracted. We can see mm. the lines on the upper left kind of balance the lines in with the, the upper right and the lower left kind of balance each other. I'm not, <clears throat> I just need something more because you're giving away what it is here. Like, it needs to be simplified or something. Yeah. Uh, this is so interesting. What is happening though? I, I also think this would be a cool shot for somebody to put on their wall if they're a photographer and they want to just kind of highlight gear. I think it's cool. You're cool. I think you're cool. Desert Shapes by Joe. Wow, I didn't realize the scale until I saw this. Oh. <laughs> Wait, but how big is that? I guess we'll never know. Yeah, it could be a bonsai tree. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what all we got to say about that. Kyle, I like what you're doing here. Are you going to crop this, Tony? Well, it does need something because, again, compositionally, there's there's nothing here that feels cool to me. It all feels <gasps> just kind of low heavy and it's a picture of water droplets. An but well, the way Kyle is going to take it to the next level is finding a meaningful way to arrange these. So study composition and study art. Well, 
That's beautiful. Okay. Well, but... I don't know what you did to convince them to do that, Brian, but it's unethical. I'm telling PETA. Played some romantic music. <laughs> <laughs> I'd make it a little more blue so that yeah. they don't look so dingy. This is not abstract also. But you got me. It's pretty incredible. You knew I'd stop. This is interesting. It's not abstract, Brian, but it is cute. And it is creative. <laughs> it really blew my mind. <laughs> um, likewise. It's cool. I like that. Um, also pretty cool. I think you can find <clears throat> great arrangements here if you just <clears throat> keep shooting, because you don't have control of the subject here. Things are going to bounce around randomly. And this arrangement is pretty interesting, like this powerful line here and these circles. But just keep shooting and look for photos that just have that, like, where the balance and the composition and the colors oh. really come together. Ooh, a lot of, like, water bubbles. Same. I think, like, we can apply what we're saying to all these little water bottle bubble pictures. Um, but some milkweed or something. I like that. Modern art specifically and abstract paintings can give you some clues as to what, like, makes these good compositions. I'd consider this surrealism, but it is very cool. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it's abstract. That's interesting. Oh, stairs. Yeah, but they made it like yellow and it's shaped like a light bulb. So there's something I'm feeling I like that something. Shot. Yeah. This is super cool. Mm -hmm. I I like that. <laughs> I like you. We did it. Um do we do Let's we do have chit -chat. chit chat? We do. Okay. Yeah, we do. Chris, do you have any more questions or comments from the peeps? Uh yeah, Alec Chung said he loves the video and live shows. He he gave a four dollar super chat thing. Thank you, Alec. Thank you. Yeah. Chit chat is yeah. the. Oh wait, he's got more. Nope. You got more? Oh okay. Chit chat is the part of the show where we read your comments. Yeah, we read your comments. Gordon says so. The title should have been, I think, that four thirds is going to die slowly. Not as much of an attention grabbing title, but an honest one. If that matters to you, next, Gordon, get a hold of yourself. Maybe you don't make titles for a reason, Gordon. <laughs> Jack Henderson says, I respect his thoughts on photography. Chelsea is why he's the man. Tony got it going on. So many exclamation points. But what about me? Why can't I be the man? Why is everybody always telling you you're cool for being with me, but I'm literally me? Nobody ever says you're so cool for being you. They always say Tony's cool for being with you. You get praise heaped on you every day. Not enough. I need more attention. Chelsea, you're cool. Woo. <laughs> Chris, Chelsea, would you rate her as cool or not cool? Cool or not Chelsea cool. Chelsea is cool. There's no question All about right. it. Okay, I got yep. the ready seal of approval. Okay. Justin, where do you stand on Chelsea's coolness? <laughs> on Chelsea's a 10 scale. Great. Uh, like a 9.5. Holy shit. You just broke oh. my heart. Ooh. Oh, God. Oh, that, that was rough. Point was for. Didn't expect that from the judges. Oh, whoa. Whoa. Okay. Wow. Yeah. What did you lose points for? I don't know. Probably that smelly hand soap in the bathroom. <laughs> Sorry about that, Justin. John says, why don't you just say that you in love with Sony and not waste our time? The worst video review on history of YouTube. The worst <laughs> in the history of He's YouTube. He's watched a lot of videos. Yeah, you've watched them all. And this is the worst one. But wait, that was the video. That's the D850 versus the A7R3 where we said we could not pick between them and because the we love them time, both. I said, I love the Nikon and I shoot with it all the time. John, you are making me crazy. Marcel says, don't publish stuff if you don't want it to be reused about our photo being stolen. <laughs> so no one should make anything ever. And if they should, it's just up for grabs and it's free and you have no respect for art and your your mom doesn't even like you. Yeah, art I mean, is meant to be kept secret. <laughs> so nobody can ever seal it and steal it. You take it. a picture and then you put it in a dark tomb and you seal it away forever. If art, you do anything else, you're asking for it. You are asking for it. <laughs> hmm. I don't agree with you at all, sir. Jacob says, <laughs> your hair sucks. Oh, this was, I think. Why'd you say that? Don't buy a drone. Why'd you say it? Which, droners hate that. Your hair doesn't suck. I think your hair is the 
great. Thanks, Jeff. I think Justin would give it a 9.5 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> it's a 10 right Justin <laughs> oh no I had oh and then 10 bear says <clears throat> oh my gosh excuse me 10 bear says Tony that was freaking sweet thank you cool dude and oh. I'm just like you know it's comments like those that make it worth it you know you call me sweet you call Tony a cool dude mm, both those were directed at me <laughs> <laughs> Chris Reddy said I'm cool. Keep trying, Charles. Justin said I'm an Keep 11 trying. out of 10. I was like, whoa, I didn't. They're not even the right numbers. <laughs> Got a question uh, for you, Tony. Okay, great. Oh, wow. Have you tried the, the Nikon 500 PF? Have you tried that on the 850 at all? Uh, no, <laughs> because we didn't have the D850 with us. But oh. was there a specific question? Like, seems like it'd be fine. I tried it on the Z, on the Z7, which has the same sensor. Whatever. What else do you have, Chris? Uh, <laughs> kind of have you ever used one of these portable uh, umbrella style soft uh, umbrella style soft boxes? Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <It> worked. <good? laughs> yeah. Yeah. We we use one all the time when we're out in the field. It's it's nice. It's fine. Yeah, I like it better than the regular umbrella. Any cool questions? <laughs> <laughs> we never get any questions about Justin. So send them in. I'll we tell do, you, but we have to edit them out. I'll uh, tell you anything you want to know about Justin. <laughs> Remember my segment idea, Just Justin, where we just cut to your yep. camera, Justin, and you had to improvise? Yeah, I do. <laughs> they called it Just In. Just In. Uh, just Tony, in. There's, there's just a bunch in. more pictures in there if you want to do a re import. Okay, I just gave Trish a pick here. I like How'd this photo. I, I, mm, I think maybe we could crop in this a little bit. Like, ooh, yeah, using a little rule of thirds. There's well, something going on here, but the space on the right was just a little overpowering to me. No. Well, I'm we got help. too close there. We started to see too much detail in the wall. But you agree, like the whole bottom right. Yeah, is a but I think unbalanced. you can like, oh, oh. Oh, we don't. Okay, well, things happen. We like Trish. <gasps> What's going on? I, well, again, we're not supposed to wonder that with abstract photography, but I do think it's it's a cool shot. Okay, this is definitely on to something. Kevin. I like this a lot. Watch the kind of fringing that we have going on there. I don't know what that's a result of. Uh, it's not abstract enough for me. I want to take also it to the hit next that level. noise reduction. Like we don't want to see all the detail in the sky. Oh, you have a um. Oh, that's true. You have a. Oh, black and white is good with that though. Ooh. Oh, so we're using our presets now for sale at our store. North of that photo. And but I came here to do the the denoise the sky. Yeah, we'll have to. There's different <laughs> denoises for different shades of blue. Okay, you really so thought it. One of them will work for just about any photo this is abstract and beautiful like there's balance between this bright white and the dark and i like it i don't know if you do tony but i'm picking it yeah i i feel like there's a little more black than there's a little more white maybe we could balance it a little bit differently but i definitely like the direction of it do you like my preset i love your preset oh my it's gosh. cool thank you yeah give it like a seven out of ten. Oh shoot you guys are so savage <laughs> This is a beautiful shot. It's that tree. I wouldn't go so far as to call it abstract, but it, I like that you lit it up. Ooh. Mm hmm. What's happening? Wow. I'm. I like this. I like it a lot. Yeah. Okay. Let's just move on. We said we like it. This is a cheese grater. <laughs> wow. You. I know your family was looking at you like, what the heck, Kristoff? What are you doing today? But I, I like it. Uh, I guess we should get out of here. I think <laughs> we looked at all here. the photos. We did it. We looked at all your Why photos. You can like never that? complain again. Chris, do you, let's leave this off with a great comment question. Okay. Yeah, there's a there's a, a <clears throat> couple, of good, couple of good questions here. Okay. Do you... Um, for photography for your computer, does 
which matters more CPUs or, or GPUs or what affects uh, a machine being able to edit the most? It's all about the gigahertz. It's, Speed all, of the processor. it's all about the gigahertz. Yeah. And well, you can say processor, but don't go for one of those thread rippers with all the cores. That's not going to get you there. You want high gigahertz, fewer cores. Like every photo app I've ever seen only uses a couple of cores. Yeah. And you want to have a GPU, like having a discrete GPU helps with a lot of things in Lightroom and Photoshop now, mm -hmm. but upgrading to like the high-end gaming card isn't going to win you anything. You can get a yeah. 1060 and you'll get the benefit way better than having like onboard graphics. This is yep. why I let you shop for my computers. <laughs> and that's why you have the ugliest computer in the world, a big Massive. old Alienware desktop. The triangular Massive. monster. I basically yep. had to rent an apartment next to our house to house my computer, but it's fast as heck. Yeah, and we don't need to run the heat in the house anymore. Yeah, we're, that's a good room that's either. true. Our yeah. office is sweltering. That's probably why we're dehydrated all the time, Justin. My computer. <laughs> right, what else, Chris? Uh, yeah, the, have you ever used any vintage lenses on DSLRs to see if there's any particular look that's different than a digital lens? Um, like we, old Nikon lenses on a, on a current Nikon body. We haven't done a lot of that, but Andy Shields has, he's a friend of ours. He wrote a post about it on our blog at Northrop.photo, I think. Did he? That sounds right. It sounds right. <laughs> yeah, right? I think I think so. Um, he does a lot of that, and he gets incredible results. And I know that it's interesting. I've actually been meaning to do more of this. So, um, when I do more of it, I'll report back. But in the meantime, Andy Shields, he's really good at finding great glass. Cool. That's interesting. I'll say that's one of the coolest things about full frame mirrorless cameras is the ability to adapt just about any old legacy lens, and then you can use like focus peaking with the manual focus on it, and you can get really cool effects without any sort of crop or anything. It's yeah. a little harder with DSLRs. Okay, so thank you for submitting your abstract photos. Um, next week we won't be here. The week after that we'll have Jared pull in here and he'll be reviewing your concert photos. That's gonna be an interesting show. Jared's a character, he's pretty funny. Um, and also we have presets that we made. You saw them, they were so cool. You were like, you were very, very impressed by it. So you can check those out at our store, um, Northrop.photo. And thank you Squarespace for making this show possible. Uh, go to squarespace.com slash Tony and use the coupon code Tony to get 10% off. You're gonna love it. Thank you Chris for helping us out as always. And thank you Justin for keeping it cool over there. The, the big time. question with the Fro Show is, is he going to get all bent out of shape because we're submitting JPEGs? I don't know. I'm going to try to minimize the drama. What? That's not what people want. I'm a little nervous. I'm, I'm definitely going to pick a fight with him as I do every I time I think you're going to try to pick a fight because every time... <laughs> He's we really hard not to make fun of. You really like to tease people. People don't know this, but Tony is evil. Right? Yeah, but I do it in a very dry way that just comes across as mean. <laughs> yeah, you're a mean person in your heart, in your dark, dark soul. Yeah. So I'm going to try to keep that train wreck on track. I apologize in advance, Jared. <laughs> okay. See you guys. Bye. Bye, all. Bye. Bye, Tigar. That is all. <laughs>